I'm gonna tell you the mistakes that I keep seeing parents make over and over again when it comes to teaching their kids about sex, sexuality, and sexual health. And I'm gonna show you how you can easily fix all of these mistakes starting today. This past year, I've had parents tell me that they really wanna have the talks, but my fees are too high and they can't afford to work with me. I get that anything that isn't free is going to need to be budgeted for by most families. I mean, I manage our family budget, so I totally get it. Here's the thing, my program is not designed for parents in crisis. It's not for the parent who just found out that their kid was searching porn on the school computer. It's not for the parent who just found out that their teen sent naked pictures of themselves to someone and is now involved in a sextortion scam. It's not for the parent who just became informed that their 16 year old is pregnant. I work with parents who are not in crisis mode. And when you're not in crisis mode, it can feel like paying for prevention is like throwing money away. But here's your reframe. What you're really doing is investing. By learning how to have the talks now, how to open up the lines of communication, how to develop their self-efficacy and their critical thinking skills around sex and sexual decision-making, you're investing in those teen years. Think about that. You are investing in your child's teen years. So many parents say that the teen years come hard and fast and it's like a punch in the gut because you don't even recognize the kid that is in front of you anymore. Now imagine trying to teach your teen about sex and relationships for the first time during all of that. Do they even want to learn about this from you now versus when they were nine years old? I've been taking on more clients and inviting more parents to join my program over the past two months because they are seeing that the investment now is worth it. Because right now their seven, eight or nine year old actually wants to talk to them. So they want to harness that curiosity and build a solid foundation that can then develop to the sex talks in the teen years. And because I work with parents over a period of two to three years, because like that's the reality of the talks, it takes time to get through all of this information. I know I can't work with everybody. And I wanna work with motivated parents who are not in crisis mode, who are willing to put in the work and start early. And that takes me to number two. Most parents are not starting the talks early enough. It's usually a crisis moment where they realize, oh, I didn't know my kid like knew about that. For those of you that are not new here, you know that I recommend to parents to explain what is sex before their kid reaches 10 years old. There's a number of reasons why I make this recommendation and you can watch all of them right here. When a new parent starts following me and hears me say this, they will usually take to the comment box and tell me that that's way too early and I'm like putting ideas into their head and whatnot. So there was this mom who said basically that to me, that it's way too early. And she told me that, you know, her kids go to private school. She knows all of the parents and none of the kids are asking about sex at this age. And they're all eight years old. She told me that she didn't want to be the one to introduce this topic to her kid. And then her kid goes and shares this information with all of the other kids. After I pointed out that that was her actual fear, not that she thought eight years old was too early to learn about sex, but she was afraid that her kid would share that information with other kids in his class. We went and we worked on that. She built up her confidence. She knew what she was gonna say. So she went and had the sex talk with her eight year old a week later. Come to find out her eight year old had actually learned about sex last year at school when he was seven from a friend who explained to him that sex is what parents do when they wanna make a baby. She said that she was shocked. She was really surprised that her kid didn't come to her and ask her if this was actually true. And she would have never had the sex talk at eight years old if it wasn't for coming across my channel. But now she's super happy that she initiated the conversation and her eight year old now feels really comfortable coming to her with his questions about the things that he hears. If you're finding this video to be helpful, a great way to let me know that is to go on and hit that like button, but you know, only if you're finding it to be helpful. Just like that mom who truly believed that her eight year old had no idea what sex was, so many parents are parenting out of fear around these topics instead of coming from a place of information and analysis. I had this reel on Instagram recently just pop off because it showed an eight year old reacting to their mom explaining what is 69. You can probably take a good guess at what the comment section looked like. You could categorize every comment into one of two categories. The first category of commenters were people who said, well, if your kid asks the question, make sure you give them correct information because they just might go elsewhere to look for the answers. And the second category of commenters were people who said, eight years old is way too effing young to be explaining sex positions like 69. Maybe you don't know this, but I am not advocating to parents to explain sexual positions to their eight year old. But 69 is a number that many kids recognize early on has another connotation. 
They notice people laughing at it and older kids joking about it. They realize that if you say that number, adults tend to perk up and are like, what did you say? So when parents are parenting out of fear, they immediately travel down that path of eight years old is way too young to know that, or they should be older before they learn that kind of stuff. Or, you know, what is this world coming to that eight year olds are learning about sex positions? Now, if you're parenting out of a place of information and analysis, you would say, some eight year olds do hear the number 69 and recognize that it doesn't just mean the number. While I may feel that eight years old is too young to learn about oral sex, if my eight year old was to come to me and ask what is 69, I would explain it to them because if I don't, they may search it on Google and I don't know what exactly would pop up. They may continue to say 69 at school or at after school activities and other kids might start to wonder what it means. And they may be told that 69, it's just a game by a child sexual abuser. And I'm gonna provide the information necessary to keep my child healthy and aware that 69 is not something children do or talk about. That is approaching what many would call a difficult conversation from an analytical point of view. Now, of course, it's easier to just say, oh, it's just a funny number and just call it a day. But don't parent out of fear. Next time you notice something that makes you wanna put your guard up and become that protective mama bear, ask yourself, what is it about this information that I'm afraid to tell my child? And then go from there. The next parenting mistake that I continuously see parents make when it comes to the sex talks is that they're not transitioning. So what this means is that your kid is constantly transitioning from each developmental milestone. And as a parent, you need to make this transition with them. You go from having a newborn that needs the basics, milk, sleep, touch, and connection, to a baby that needs tummy time and a space to explore their environment safely, to a toddler who needs boundaries and answers to their questions, to a preteen who needs support and patience from you while they work out things on their own, to a teen who has the body of an adult but a developing brain. These developmental transitions are very real and many parents fail to transition with their kids in order to provide the information and environment necessary. So let's talk about 69 again for a second. The point of the question is to understand that the number 69 can refer to the number as well as a sexual position. When an intermediate age kid asks that question, they are not developmentally at a point where they're interested in having sex. Now that generally coincides with puberty if it happens at all. So by you explaining what is 69, your kid is seeing that you are a parent who answers their questions. You are a parent who wants them to be informed and educated. You are a parent who they know they can get accurate information from. And they feel like you're treating them more like the teenager they want to be and not like their baby sibling. When parents join my program, they start to build out their timeline to the talks and they start to visually see where these transitions may happen for their own kid. Because of course, every kid is different. But if you know that a transition is on the horizon, you can acknowledge that and begin planning for it. And I can help you do that. Just fill out the form that is linked in the description and comments, and let's find out if my parenting program is right for you. I will be the first one to say that parenting is hard and it's exhausting, and I just need a break sometimes. And the last thing that I wanna do on my break is work on my parenting skills. But that's exactly what I have to do in order to make parenting not so frustrating. You will learn a lot here by watching these videos, and I give out so much information that can help you to answer your kids' sex questions. But when you just watch my videos and you watch me say the words, you are passively learning. But do you know what's the best way to actually learn something? Practicing the words, and think about how they'll react, plan for their potential questions, and how you will respond. What if they ask you, did you do that? How will you respond to personal questions? Put in the work. It's your kid, it's still a taboo topic. You are most likely still uncomfortable talking about sex and explaining these topics to your kid. So you're gonna have to put in some work. If you wanna work with me and you wanna get professional guidance on how to go from feeling anxious about it to confident, then fill out that form. Now I have to throw in a bonus one here because I hear this one all the time. You truly believe that your kid is the exception. I'm gonna tell you that your kid is unremarkable. Now, they are special to you, but most likely they are just an average, unremarkable kid to everybody else. And I say this as a parent who also has unremarkable kids. Now, they are the most special kids to me, and I would choose to hang out with them and play Uno with them any day of the week over playing Uno with other people's kids, but they are pretty average kids. 
By me being able to say this means that I recognize that on the bell curve, my kids are right in the middle. This means that they will probably ask, where do babies come from around ages four, five, and six? Or what is sex around ages seven, eight, and nine? Or they might see porn around ages 11 and 12 because those are the averages and my kids are average. What I often hear from parents is, I'm homeschooling my kids so they don't hear about this stuff. Or my kids go to private school so they're protected from this. Or we don't have screens in our house so there's no chance of an unintentional view. I hear that and I don't doubt that you are a great parent who wants the best for their kids. Maybe your kid really is the exception. Then let's plan for that. When we create your timeline, let's plan for when you think it is more age appropriate for them to hear about that topic because you're still planning to have the talks, right? It's just on a different timeline. You could also fill out that form below if you wanna start planning with me. So those are the five mistakes, actually six mistakes, that I constantly see parents making that are easily avoidable. Which one are you gonna work on right now? Let me know in the comments.